Good evening all. Yeah. Good evening all. Some flashing LEDs courtesy of Oink, the one instruction computer, so called because it's a pig to program. Well, it's not too bad to program. Um, all binary computers, uh, hexadecimal and binary computers, of course, are going to be a little bit difficult to program. There are no uh, software tools here, so I'm having to enter the code on little dual inline switches. Now, I don't normally make videos in the evening, but I thought natural daylight would just swamp all of this out, and this would look better under uh, just a single light on the ceiling. So, what's new with the one instruction computer? Well, the ability to create immediate data or literals or constants and you can see that I'm generating two constants here uh, 58 hex and 85 hex and I'm alternately writing them to well this register here it's writable register number one it's got a couple of uh, binary to hex decoders and a couple of seven segment displays now I should say that the default radix the default number base for this video is hexadecimal. So any number that sounds like decimal isn't decimal, it's hexadecimal. Decimal will never appear in videos about oink because it has no place in them. This is binary, hexadecimal. So one of the problems with the one instruction computer is that it only has one instruction. And that instruction is, well, it's a sort of copy and it's copying data from uh, well, this register here, this latch, through this buffer onto the data bus, which is just these eight wires here, and then into this latch, whereupon it's displayed on the two-digit hexadecimal display. But the trouble is, if you've only got one instruction, which can copy stuff from one place to another, how do you create numbers? How do you create data in the first place? And this was the challenge that I had with this computer, and it's solved. So the instruction format is very simple. There's no actual op code. There are only operands and they are two four bit numbers, um, a four bit number to specify the read address, which here is zero and a four bit number to specify the write address. In this case, it's one. So the read address is zero. I can write that in binary as four zeros. The write address is one. I can write that as treble zero one. And in hexadecimal, of course, this is zero, 01. Now that's the instruction to copy. All instructions are copies. Copy the data from this latch through this buffer onto the data bus and into this latch from device zero to device one. So how do I actually generate these numbers? 58, which is the age I've just become. Yay. And 85, which was just the numbers the other way around. I thought that was quite entertaining. Well, what I decided was that um, putting a read address onto uh, the device that then puts its data onto the data bus is non-destructive. And as far as I can tell, uh, however this computer ends up uh, being completed, it never will be destructive. So I can issue these numbers, anything from zero up to F hexadecimal or zero to 15 in uh, decimal. I can issue these, uh, these numbers and they're not going to cause any problems to the operation of the computer. Now, if I could somehow capture this number and store it and then capture a second number, also four bits, and store that, and that's how this register is working, I can assemble any 8-bit number I want from 00 through to FF. And so that's how this, um, this constant, this literal, this immediate data generator is working. You simply take um, some data in the form of a read address, the first four bits, and you write it to latch zero. So write there the W, zero addresses this latch. So we write the read address into that latch. Then you create another read address and you write it in again. And you can see these four wires jumping over here. So what happens is the first time you write it into the lower four bits, the second time you strobe this latch, the lower four bits get written to the upper four bits and a new lower four bits go in. That way you've assembled eight bits of data and the number is in this latch. So in order to put 58 into this latch or register, I simply write 50 and then 80. So five 
goes into latch zero, eight goes into latch zero, and then to transfer it to the display, I have to do a copy from latch zero to latch one, so it's zero one. Now, if we carry on with the program, in order to get 85 hexadecimal again, remember, I want eight zero five zero, and again, copy from latch zero to latch one. So that's the program that alternately puts 58 onto the display and 85 onto the display. So let's key in a new program with some new numbers and see whether it really is a pig to program. So to do that, let's kill the power. Just switch this battery pack off, switch it back on. We have uh, nothing recognizable anywhere in the computer. Now these RAM chips, this one, which is the uh, program flow RAM or the go to RAM, it contains go to addresses, the next address um, from the one you're on. And this RAM, which contains these uh, program instructions, both have kind of random data in them at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the clock and I'm going to set uh, the address on this RAM to zero. And now I want to start putting these instructions in, but I've also got to put in the go to's. Now the go to addresses could be incrementing in binary or there could be something quite arbitrary. So I'm going to try something a bit different this time. I'm going to put the addresses in. In fact, I'm going to put in the program flow sequence first. I know I need six instructions. So let's have the first one will be at address um, one. Let's put that in and display it. There it is at address one. Now address one will move on to address two. So let's program that in and move on. And then I'm going to move on to address four. And I'm simply going to move up the scale in a sort of binary weighted fashion. So that goes to four, move to four, four goes to eight. These switches are a little bit fiddly. Move on to eight, eight goes to 16. Move on to 16, we're there now. And finally, I want 16 goes to, I think I'll use this pen actually, uh, 32, which is that one I do believe. Let's write that in, move on. Yes, that's there. 32. Oh, that's decimal. And I said I'd never use decimal. Okay. Um, well, what is that? That's 20 hexadecimal. That can go back to address zero. So if I now switch this on, you should see. Oh, no, I don't want to go back to address zero, do I? I want to go back to address one because I want each of my address locations to be one of these LEDs on. So I'm not going to use address zero. Let's stop the clock again move to that one. Now that one wants to go back to address one. So let's program one in. Now I go one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. These are decimal again and back to one. So my program flow goes through those addresses. Now, as I say, it could have been a binary count. And when I first started this video, it was a binary count, but this is now doing this binary weighted count, this uh, multiply by two each time. It works the same way. And now I'm going to stop the uh, clock again and single step it. So I want to get back to my first location, which is one. Um, I could write that in here, I guess. The address is one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Oh, these are base 10. I've broken my first rule already. Um, right, so what I need now is uh, an instruction. The first instruction is 50. So I want uh, five, zero, write that in there. The next one is 80. So bring these two down, take that one up. Uh, have I moved on to the next location? No, I haven't. So 80 goes in there. And the next instruction is zero, one, which is on the third position here. Yep. So we'll go zero, one. Now, actually, zero, one goes in there. It also goes in the sixth position, so I might as well do that while I'm at it. I'll program that one in there. Um, I wanted, oh, I'm still using 58 and 85. Well, that's fine. So that's five, eight, zero to one. And actually that's clocked it through into the display. Now we need eight, which is like that. Eight, uh, five, 
which is 0101. And remember, it's 5 being written to latch 0, which is this. This is latch 0. Uh, program that in. And again, we've got 0, 1. So now, if I single step through this, that's our first um, memory location. And it's 5, 0, and then 8, 0, and then 0, 1. That actually writes it into the display. Then in the next position, we have uh, 8, 5, and 0 to 1 again, copy 0 to 1. That writes the 8 and the 5 into this latch and then copies the whole lot, all 8 bits, into there. So if I free run that now, like so, this display alternates between my first constructed number, 58, and my second constructed number, 85. So that's how you create literals or immediate data constants on the one instruction computer which can really only move stuff from one place to another but by reading the read address twice or two different read addresses putting them in here and making this operator as a shift register we can create any number from zero to ff and this ability to create immediate data any number is really important because when I add onto this data bus the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, I need to be able to write a configuration word to the ALU to put it in whatever mode I want it in, add, subtract, uh, and, or, exclusive, or, and the various other options that there are. And prior to constructing this, there was no way to create an arbitrary configuration word. Now there is, now I can move on, build the ALU and add it to the data bus and expand OINK even further. So there it is, there's uh, OINK with its new literals feature. Now I'm trying to decide what ultimately this computer is going to do and I haven't really come to a decision on it yet. I kind of was thinking originally perhaps I could calculate pi or something like that but I kind of feel that's a little bit boring uh, as an end goal for this thing, which has taken me so long to develop. So I'm now kind of thinking, well, maybe I should have something like an ADC and a DAC on it and somehow interface this wonderful digital logic to an analog world and pull in analog data, store it possibly in a RAM and send it back out again. So. I still haven't really decided what this computer is going to do, but I'm starting to think I'd quite like to have a mix of analog and digital. But uh, anyway, for the moment, I'm quite happy with my immediates, my literals, my new feature. There it is. Cheerio.